about various companies which are a part of this nifty 50 index but meanwhile you might be wondering that what was this fuss about me first me first it's coming up in another three four minutes maximum so stay tuned let me remind you all one more time that all these creative people are spammers that's how my account looks like also remember i never give my mobile number in any chat i neither have an advisory nor do I give any stock tips. So before we go ahead with understanding more details about ICICI Bank, I would just like to give you some more information about our Nifty 50 series. This year, we plan to start a separate series wherein we'll try and cover a majority of stocks which form a part of the Nifty 50 index. And we've already covered quite a bit companies till date, but our mission is to cover all the companies in minimum possible time okay right so with that let's get started with icici bank it's an indian multinational bank uh, and a financial services company with its corporate office in mumbai now why am i saying multinational have a look at this it has its presence in 17 countries and totality the branches are 5275 and they have in total 15589 ATMs, right? Which all services are offered by ICICI Bank? They offer services like retail banking, investment banking, life insurance, non-life insurance, also venture capital and asset management, right? Uh, with all these things said and done, one very nice point is that ICICI Bank, HDFC Bank and SBI all are classified as systematically important banks. So what's the systematically important banks or domestic systematically important banks? This is a terminology given by RBI to them. RBI says that just in case if something goes wrong with these banks, don't worry, we are going to be the savior for these banks. Let me take you through the amazing history of ICICI. In 1955, ICICI was formed as a joint venture with the World Bank. In the 1990s, ICICI transformed its business from a financial institutions limited to development projects to a diversified financial services group. In 1994, ICICI Bank was promoted by ICICI Limited. In fiscal 1998, ICICI Bank came up with its IPO and got listed in India. In 1999, ICICI became the first Indian financial institution from non-Japan Asia to be listed on the NYSE. In 2000, ICICI Bank got listed on NYSE. And in 2001, ICICI Limited was merged with ICICI Bank. It was a reverse merger of the financial institution ICICI with its banking arm. I hope you enjoyed the history of ICICI and ICICI Bank. Well, I want to give you homework first. Have a look at this picture. I want to tell you the name of this lady who played a very key role in ICICI getting listed on NYSE and also played a key role in the reverse merger of ICICI Limited with ICICI Bank. And now in this section, you will come to know what was happening in the pre-bumper. Why was that person saying me first, me first? So have a look at this. By the way, ICICI has been a pioneer in bringing tech-enabled products to its customers. It has been the first bank in India to introduce internet banking and, 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 and. Ma'am, control, control. What's that? Well, take care. So, ICICI has been the first bank in India to introduce internet banking in 1998. Also the first bank to provide mobile remittance services. First bank to offer NRI remittances through Facebook. To launch contactless debit cards and credit cards in India. To implement e-toll collection. And the last one is also amazing. It was the first bank in India to successfully exchange and authenticate 
foreign exchange remittances using the blockchain technology. And wait, like ICICI Bank was a pioneer, the first one in so many things, you can also be the first one in what? Smashing the like button! Well, I hope that you have understood how ICICI Bank has been the first mover in so many tech-based areas, right? Now, moving on to another question. What do you feel? Nifty Next 50 and Nifty 50. ICICI Bank fits into which of these two indices? Just in case if you don't know about these two indices, let me quickly explain this point to you. Nifty 50, I'm sure everyone knows, it's like an index which comprises of top 50 companies which are listed in India. And Nifty Next 50, as the name suggests, Next 50. So it'll be like 51 to 100, right? Now if I ask you, where does it fit? And uh, your answer will be Nifty Next 50, okay? But wait. It was in Nifty Next 50 only till 2002 and then it shifted from the Next 50 index to the Nifty 50 index. Okay, now uh, you might be uh, not aware of this fact, but have a look at this chart. The purple line indicates the Nifty Next 50 performance and the blue line indicates Nifty 50 performance. And you can see that quite a number of times Nifty Next 50 has outperformed the Nifty 50 index. Okay, so in simple words, I can say Nifty 50, uh, Nifty Next 50 companies are like the blue chip companies of tomorrow. Okay, so if you were to diversify your portfolio, not only into Nifty 50 companies, but also to Nifty Next 50 companies, how do you do that? So for that, Navi Mutual Fund is providing a cost effective way of investing in the blue chip companies of tomorrow, like I mentioned, with its NFO of Nifty Next 50 index fund. Uh, their total expense ratio for a direct plan is just 0.12% as compared to the category average of 0.35%. You can invest via platforms like Zero the Coin, Grow and Paytm. So if you want more information on this, do not forget to check the link in the description box. And of course, remember, that mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. So please read all the scheme related documents carefully before investing. Let's start with the financials with a fun fact. Okay, uh, if you have a look at these line items in particular, you will see that uh, interest earned, other income, interest expended. We don't see all these points in other companies' PNL. How come they are presenting this in a different way as compared to other companies? So for that, the answer is that whenever I'm talking about other companies, other companies means companies other than banking companies, they have to follow something known as NDAS. Indian Accounting Standards uh, for the listed companies, okay, specifically. For unlisted companies, different norms, uh, let's not go into that. Uh, for banking companies, even though you have to follow index, priority-wise, you have to follow the provisions mentioned in Banking Regulations Act. In simple words, the presentation style of PNL and balance sheet is different for banking companies as compared to non-banking companies, right? So with that, Fun fact, trivia, whatever you call. Uh, let's move on with the line items. The very first one is interest earned. If you see, all rupees are in crores. And as at March 2021, their interest earned is at a lifetime high of 89,162 crores. Even if you check PAT, PAT figure is at lifetime high again of 20,363 crores. Also have a look at this. In March 2020, the PAT was 11,225 crores, which has jumped to 20,363.97 crores. So that's a significant jump in PAT, right? Even if you check the adjusted EPS, adjusted EPS has gone up from 14.78 to 26.58. Do the numbers look good only in an annual basis or also in the quarterly uh, statements? Have a look at this. Quarterly results, we have the data from September 20 to September 21. Here also you can see, uh, first if I compare uh, a YOY scenario, interest earned is up from 22,226 crores to 23,478 crores. For a QOQ, there is a slight jump from 23,097 crores to 23,478 crores. For PAT figures also, if you see, for a YOY comparison, it has gone up from 5,394.48 crores to 6,315.83 crores. And even if you check QOQ, there is a good growth from 4,976.82 crores to 6,315.83 crores. All in all, even if you check uh, the quarterly update of September 21, you can see they have clocked the highest revenue, they have clocked the highest profit after tax and also highest EPS. Now, given all these points, 
is there still some value left in the stock for that you will have to do the valuation of all these uh, banks and of course there are different methods through which you can value uh, any stock uh, i do have a separate course on valuation you can surely check that out but one simple way can be doing the pe analysis okay now if you have a look at this graph you can see that those bar graphs talk about the eps okay you can very clearly see that eps is continuously rising for last few quarters but the pe line which is the line that is dropping since december 19 and it has sharply uh, fallen down and it's very much at the 25 mark for a long time so all in all you can see pe is not increasing but eps is increasing that shows that yes there is a possible upside in the stock right now uh, is this only my thought process that there is a stock upside uh, possible or are there even other research houses those have a similar opinion so i have a look at this one as well uh, i have given you data of idbi capital access direct motilal oswal and lkp securities all these brokers have given their reports on i mean these are latest uh, reports right just previous month uh, 6 december 5 december 3 december these are the report dates and all these four brokers research houses they are mentioning that there is a significant upside in the stock ranging from 28% to 39% okay now all this said and done we need to compare icici bank with its peers right and one of the closest peer of icici bank of course no need to say it is hdfc bank so let's try and compare these two banks based on five criteria okay what is the first one kasa what is kasa asa kasa kai matlab kasa nahi hai to okay kasa is current account saving account so uh, simple higher kasa better it is why simple explanation more and more kasa funds the bank has how much interest bank has to pay for current account 0% for saving account barely 3 4% so is the cost of funding very less for the bank yes so what is the thumb rule kasa higher the better simple thumb rule okay compare icici bank versus hdfc bank icici bank is 46.17% hdfc bank is 46.12% almost neck to neck nothing no much difference okay now let's come to a very important point which is advances growth okay if more and more advances are being given is that good yes more advances growth will lead to more interest earned right what is advances growth for icici bank it's 12.11% for hdfc bank it is 14% okay so for hdfc bank higher advances growth but wait what if a bank keeps on going uh, advances dhar 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 and doesn't check the credit worthiness of the borrower what will it what will it lead to it will lead to npas okay so you have to check two things simultaneously number one check the advances growth and number two check the npa growth as well okay what about npas for icici bank net npo 0% is that a good one absolutely yes for hdfc bank also it's 0.4% of course agreed it's higher than icici bank but 0.4% is also pretty much negligible right then we go to nim which is net interest margins the simpler explanation can be interest spent versus interest earned that's similar to net in interest margin okay for icici bank 3.15% and hdfc bank 3.83% uh, quickly tell me net interest margin higher the better or lower the better obviously higher the better right so for hdfc bank it's a shade higher as compared to icici bank but again it's just 3.15% versus 3.83% and finally we come to roe which is for icici bank 14.85% versus hdfc bank 16.61% so is hdfc bank a shade better than icici bank i still feel yes but am i scrapping out icici bank not for sure it still has sound fundamentals So let's move on to the technical analysis of this stock and try and understand whether the stock is in the buying zone right now or whether it's in the selling zone okay so i have just drawn two trend lines right now trying to identify a zone in which it is trading since the last few months okay so this is a zone from february 2021 till december uh, 2021 as i shoot the video on 28th of december right so here you can very clearly see that the highest point till this lower point and again it tried to go up and da da da, da sideways sideways went up and came down till this point and right now it is at the lower end of the band okay so is there a possibility that it can bounce back from here ideally 
as per technical analysis yes it's at a very strong support zone right now okay now uh, we also have to check uh, how about the moving average so if i were to just enable the 50 day moving average right now you can see that it's very 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 close to the moving average of course as i shoot the video it has just closed below the 50 day moving average but it doesn't mean that immediately there will be a selling pressure and it will just crash like anything we will need to check how it closes above that 50 days moving average if it does and with good volumes then again as i mentioned there are great chances that this stock may move higher now if i were to check even what are the fibonacci levels for this one uh, i'm just enabling this here you can see that the pivot level is at 744 okay so right now i can say that it's in a very tight zone very nice support zone so the stock is in short in a very interesting zone right now so don't forget to add this stock in the watch list and keep a close watch on this stock well, I hope you enjoyed this video on ICICI Bank. Do let me know in the comment section, which stock do you want me to cover in the next video in our Nifty 50 series. If you want to know more about HDFC Bank, you can click here. And if you want to know more about Yes Bank, you can click here. Till then, take care. Jai Hind and bye-bye. Mutual fund investments are subject to market risks. Read all scheme-related documents carefully.